Hey guys, it's Andrea from VW Family Farm. Today is day four on this fence project. I wanted to tell you that because sometimes on these vlog type videos, it's hard to tell the time lapse, but we have been on this fence project now. This is the fourth day. I wanted to kind of show you what we've been doing. We have built zero fence so far. This has all been clearing old fence rows and clearing just growed up spots. This is gonna be a rotational grazing setup. We have quite a bit of land. Some of y'all have asked about that. We're gonna be sharing more of our story, like how did we get this land, um, those types of things, whose land was this, was it inherited, all those types of things, because we've had all that asked. But let's just say we have quite a large amount of land. Our homestead is on a small piece of that land. Like our whole homestead is probably on about five acres. Now we'll go and cut hay in different places, which we're gonna be transitioning out of cutting hay with going into rotational grazing. Because the point of rotational grazing is pack your land full of animals, cows mainly, and sometimes sheep, and then buy your hay and let someone else be fertilizing it and bring that in to fertilize your land. Don't strip your land by cutting hay on it put animals on your land. Now I know you say, well, that's kind of counterproductive. You're, you're buying someone else's hay that they've stripped off their land and it's stripping their soil. Well, the thinking is people are gonna do that anyway. So you're not gonna stop everyone from cutting hay, even though that's not the best practice is to be cutting and, and baling hay and stripping all your nutrients and all that off. You're, you're doing the land a favor and you're gonna grow better animals by grazing animals and letting them fertilize your land by their manure and all that, spreading seeds and letting winter crops grow, all those types of things. So we're not at the point yet that we are gonna fence in all our land. We're starting with a 120 acre field, which is quite large. So this is a huge project. Like I said, we've not built any fence yet. We're just getting ready to. But I thought I'd show you what Ben's up to today. And we have some awesome friends that are really more like family that have let us borrow a piece of equipment to get through some of these growed up areas. Cause some of these places there was fencage years ago, but it's not had a fence in a long time. So it's really growed up. I, my thoughts were just go around those areas and run our hot wire on the outside of those. And Ben just doesn't do things that way. His thoughts were, do it right get a piece of equipment and go through these brushy areas and run our hot wire and let the cows start cleaning up some of those areas we may go back and clear them out some ourselves if the cows don't get it done but cows will do a lot more than you think they would on clearing up an area but we didn't have the piece of equipment to do that we have quite a bit of equipment and we're going to be showing you some of that throughout the winter too because we don't have like a, a small little homestead that we don't have resources and, and big pieces of heavy machinery. And that's fine if you do. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing if you don't. But I just want to paint you a real picture of what kind of homestead and farm we have. We do have some tractors and uh, backhoe and some pieces of equipment, but we didn't have anything to go through the woods with. In comes our friends. We are doing a little barter with them for some meat and we are using their piece of equipment. It's gonna save us money, not having to go rent one commercially. And I hope they're gonna get meat that they'll enjoy out of it. So I hope everyone will be happy in the end, but they would have let us use it for nothing, honestly. And if you don't have friends like that, you need to get some because it's awesome to have friends. It's the same friends that you saw Ben over taking the bees out of their house. And that's just what friends do. You you loan each other stuff you're there for each other and the good times and the bad and so if you don't have some friends like that invest in people and find some because it just takes time and getting to know people investing in them and letting them invest in you so i just encourage you to do that and let's go see what ben's up to you can see that is some growed up woods and then you can see the path through that's the trail that ben blazed through there for our fence to go through and so instead of going around all this area, we're now gonna be able to go straight through there like he wants to. Now these woods over here, pretty soon are gonna get logged and then we're gonna incorporate that, that into the pasture. So every little bit of pasture that you don't clear, it's just land you're losing. Now we do have areas that are, are growed up that we leave on purpose for deer and wildlife and things like that, but we don't leave every little patch of brush that grows up. So here is what Ben is up to today. He is using this little mini X and clearing out 
out the fence rows so we can get as close as possible to the hot wire with the hot wire. So we're probably going to wrap this section of the fence up. We're going to try to do this in a series so if you're wanting to set up rotational grazing you can kind of see what we do because Ben has put many hours of research into how to set this up. We actually visited, there's a local office here and they're all over the country. It's a, it's a government agency so they're all over the country that they will help you put in rotational grazing systems, mainly the water systems and things like that. We thought about going with that, but sometimes it takes a few years to get approved. And just to be honest, the longer we wait on this project, we would be losing money by not going ahead and setting it up. We'd be money ahead to go ahead and pay to set this up out of our pocket, because in reality, it doesn't cost that much to set this up. You don't have to have, I mentioned we have heavy equipment and things, but you know what, to raise cattle, you don't have to have any of those things. That's what people are kind of getting back to. You don't have to have all the hay equipment. You can raise cattle for, there's people doing it where they're hardly feeding any hay by managing their property and rotating them around. But even what they do, it's much cheaper for them to buy than to maintain equipment. And I can tell you from experience, if you've ever done hay, something's gonna break almost every time you do hay. And we had people tell us that they bought new equipment trying to avoid that problem, the new stuff still breaks. So we just thought from looking into it, talking to people, we're money ahead to just go ahead and do this. So we're not getting any kind of help to do this. We're just doing this out of our pocket, out of our farm, setting this up. So the first step is, and that's what you've seen on this video, figure out where your fences are gonna go and start getting the perimeter set up. And what I mean by that is we are on the highway. So we are putting in barbed wire, uh, multiple strand barbed wire fence along the highway because we bought a very good fence charger, but we just do not want to take a chance on a cow getting on the highway and getting hit and possibly hurting or killing someone. So that's why we're doing that. All this clearing you're seeing Ben do that I just showed you, all that is going to be for hot wire because the entire thing is going to be movable except for the highway fence. The rest of it, we can set up tiny pins, bigger pins, three acre pins, five acre pins, whatever we want to do that day. We can, and depending on the grass and the number of animals we have and all that. So the first step is just get ready, get planning where your fences are going to go and get clearing. So because you want to make your land as profitable as possible. So you want to clear to where you can get it as much to the edge of your property as possible. I hope this helped you. Next coming up on this series is barbed wire. So we've got to finish welding the H braces for the corner post. We've got to pound a few more posts and then we're going to be stringing hot wire. And we will see you on the next video. We'll have many more videos in between these fence videos because this is going to be probably a little bit of a lengthy process. We really don't have any idea how long it's going to take, but we're going to bring you along. We'll see you on the next video. God bless. We're going to try to do this bug.